Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.56 One who is not disturbed by the three types of miseries given by one's own body or mind, given by others and given by the demigods or nature, who remains free from hankering in the present of plentiful opportunities for sensual happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear and anger, is called a sage of steady mind. Sar Ardavarshni How does one who is of fixed intelligence speak? To answer this question, Sri Bhagavan speaks the present verse beginning with Dukeju and also the next verse. Dukeju means the threefold miseries, Adhyatmika, Adibautika and Adidevika. Adhyatmika miseries are hunger, thirst, fever, headache and so on. They come from one's own body and mind. Adibautika miseries are caused by other living entities, such as a snake or a tiger, and Adi Devika miseries, such as excessive rain and natural disaster, are caused by the demigods. Anudvikna Manaha refers to a person whose mind is undisturbed. When he is faced by such miseries, he thinks, I have attained these miseries due to my past actions and I have to suffer them. Knowing this, he either deliberates upon this within himself, understanding the misery to be due to the reactions to his own past action, or he speaks openly and without duplicity when questioned by others. In either case, his face shows no agitation, even in the presence of these miseries. This absence of disturbance is evident to those who are expert in reading such symptoms. However, it is obvious when an imitator artificially manifests symptoms of tolerance. Those who are expert call that imitator corrupt. Similarly, he who remains free from desires when a happy situation appears, knowing it to be enjoyment resulting from past actions, either contemplates it within himself or enlightens others. His actual response to this also is understood by learned men. The present verse clarifies such symptoms, describing such persons as first, Bita Raga, detached from happiness, second, Vita Vaya, free from the fear that entities such as tigers may eat them, three, Vita Groda, free from anger, even toward a person who comes to attack or kill them. An example of this is Jada Bharata. No fear or anger arose in him when the dacoit king Vrishala took him to the deity of Devikali as a human sacrifice. Sarardavarshini Prakashikariti A person whose heart is not disturbed by the threefold miseries Adhyatmika Adibautika and Adidevika, who is devoid of the desire to attain happiness and who does not become elated when happiness comes to him, is called a person of fixed intelligence or Stita Pragya. Na Prarsheti Priyam Prapya Nodvi Jet Prapya Kapriyam Stira Budhir Asam Mudho Brahmavit Brahmani Stita Bhagavad Gita 5.20 A person who does not become elated when attaining something dear to him is called 
Stita Bragya. The example of this is the life history of Bharata Maharaja, as described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bharata Maharaja was worshipping Bhagavan alone in a remote forest after renouncing his entire kingdom. In the last part of his life, he became attached to an infant deer. Due to his state of mind, upon leaving his body, he then took birth as a deer. But because he remembered his previous birth, he remained isolated from the association of family and friends and spent his time in the hermitages of the sages, hearing topics of Sri Bhagavan. As a result of his worship of Bhagavan in his previous life, he took his next birth in the house of a religiously devoted Brahmana. Internally, he always remembered Sri Bhagavan, but externally, he kept himself completely aloof from the world by pretending to be a madman. Even though his father diligently tried to make him learn the Vedas, Jada Bharata tolerated ill treatment and thorns by his stepmother, stepbrothers and relatives, while remaining ecstatically absorbed in the worship of Bhagavan. Once Rishala, the king of thieves, desired a son, and he wanted to offer a human being who was free from bodily flaws in sacrifice to his worshipful goddess, Badra Kali. He had previously captured a suitable person for sacrifice, but somehow the man had escaped. While the decoyed king was wandering in search of his escaped offering, he saw the Maha Bhagavata Jada Bharata protecting his family's fields. The decoyed king became happy when he saw that Jada Bharata was blessed with a body appropriate for the sacrifice. According to the rules for sacrificing a human, he fed Jada Bharata nicely, decorated him with turmeric powder, garlands and sandalwood paste, and eventually presented him before Kali Devi as an offering. The topmost devotee Jada Bharata saw, heard and was aware of all this, but he felt neither fear or anger. Rather, he simply stood there completely free from anxiety, fixed in remembrance of Bhagavan. Just as the robbers were ready to sever Jada Bharata's head, Kali Devi herself appeared in a ferocious form, making a loud noise. She snatched the sword from the hand of King Vrishala and beheaded him and all his servants. After drinking their blood, she danced and played with their heads as if they were balls. Finally, with great affection, she sent the great devotee Jada Bharata on his way. This deity of Bhadra Kali is still present in Kurukshetra. While describing this history of Jada Bharata in Srimad Bhagavatam 5.9.20, Shukadeva Goswami said to Parikshit Maharaja, O Vishnu Rata, one who is always protected by the arms of the Lord, Bhagavan Sri Vishnu, who carries the Shudarshan Chakra, is death to death personified, and he is always anxious to look after his devotees. He completely protects such exalted devotees who have become free from falsely identifying the body as the self, who have performed the very difficult task of severing the note of mundane attachment, whose hearts are anxiously absorbed in thoughts of performing welfare 
for all living entities, and who neither harm others nor feel enmity towards them. Such swan-like devotees, Paramahamsas, who accept the shelter of Sri Bhagavan's fearless lotus feet, are never disturbed, even at the time of their own execution. There is nothing surprising about this.